Hey, this is the second part of the 1.6 video over perpendicular and parallel lines as we're writing equations for them. So in this little section, I, I put it just as odds and ends, like what are some of the special cases? Uh, what if they ask a question that's different than the, the ones that looked like one through four? Um, so let's get started. Let's say you're given the graph of the equation x equals five. What would the equation of the line parallel to it look like? if we knew it passed through 2, 4? And what would the equation of the line perpendicular look like to it that passes through 3, 7? So the best way I can think to, to, uh, to explain this is let's first just visualize the situation by looking at the graph of x equals 5. So if you recall, uh, x equals 5 is a vertical line. Write 5 units and then draw it pretty much parallel to the y-axis. All right. So this is the line x equals 5. What would the line parallel to it that also passes through the point 2, 4 look like? Okay, so, so here's the point 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So here's the point 2, 4. It's got to be parallel to that, which means it's got to be another vertical line. So my question to you guys is, what's the equation of this line here? If this vertical line is x equals 5, this vertical line is going to be x equals 2. And that's your answer. Notice we didn't do step one, talk about the slope. Step two, plug in for x, y, and m. Step three, rewrite the equation. This was kind of a one-step deal. If you know that the line given to you is a vertical line, any parallel line has also got to be vertical to it. And the x-coordinate is what decided what that equation should be. Now, sometimes this can be tricky. You can't just be like, oh, it's always x equals, because sometimes you might be asked a question that's totally different than parallel. So I'm going to erase my x equals 2 here. It got us the answer we needed for 5a. Okay. 5b says it's a, it passes through the point 3, 7. 1, 2, 3. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, all right, 1, 2, 3, yeah, and then x equals 5 keeps going up here. Uh, what would it look like to be perpendicular to it? Yeah, what kind of line creates a 90 degree angle, one of these deals, with this vertical line and also passes through here? Well, it's got to be this line. Horizontal lines are perpendicular to vertical lines, every single one of them. So what would be the equation for this horizontal line that passes through 3, 7? It's not going to be x equals 3, because x equals 3 would be vertical. So our only other option really is y equals 7.
and that's it. So I guess be prepared to talk about uh, special cases in a way that's very different from the ones before that. I just graphed it and then kind of thought my way through it this way. And I would encourage you guys to do the same thing. Keep in mind that horizontal lines are always perpendicular to vertical lines. And also keep in mind that horizontal lines are always parallel to horizontal lines. Horizontal lines are always parallel to other horizontal lines. In the same way, you could say vertical lines are always parallel to vertical lines. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and write it up here. Vertical lines are always parallel to other vertical lines. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, I included these two examples as well. They're just, uh, they're kind of out of the norm. Let's see how you guys react to it. All right, got it. It says, write an equation of the line with a y-intercept of negative 6. That's parallel to the graph of x minus 3y equals 8. Okay, so... So it seems like the missing piece here is that they didn't give us a point that it passes through, or at least they didn't say that it passes through a specific point. What they're doing here is they're saying, this is the point that it passes through. It hits the y-axis at negative 6. So you can think about this in two ways. If you're on the y-axis, specifically at negative 6, you, we should be able to say what that ordered pair is. It's 0, negative 6. Or, you could say the y-intercept has always represented the b in the equation y equals mx plus b. If you get information like the y-intercept is negative 6, you could just say b equals negative 6. That's the place where our graph would start. So I already got part of the, part of the puzzle here. b is negative 6. The question is, what is m as it's as it relates to x minus 3y equals 8. What would a slope of a parallel line to that be? Well, you got to find the slope of this line first. So it's kind of like, here's step one. Step one is get the y term by itself so that you can actually investigate what the m in front of the x looks like. this positive one-third and then 8 over negative 3 it's just the y-intercept of that original line I don't really worry about it too much it is negative 2 and two-thirds though okay so the slope of this line is one-third the slope of any line parallel to it 
is also one third. So normally we would do step number two and say, pick x is zero, y is negative six, and m is one third. I'd, I'd list it boom, 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 one right after the other. But in this case, we, we kind of talked about how the b value is already known. I know what m is. I know what b is. So there's your shortcut. All right. Last one. The last one states, write an equation of a line that's perpendicular. So we're instantly, we're concerned with perpendicular slope. It goes through 9, 10, and 3, negative 2. It's write an equation of the line that's perpendicular to the line that goes through. The, okay, so there's a lot going on here. Here's what we got to do. We first have to figure out what is this original line? Well, step one for that process would be find the slope. So you take the y's and subtract them, take the x's, subtract them. You get negative 20 over 6. Well, negative 20 over negative 6. Oh, I'm not, not negative 20, negative 12. My bad. It ends up being 2. Then you pick an x and a y and use the m equals 2. So I'm going to go with x equals 3, y equals negative 2, and m equals 2. Plug them in for y equals mx plus b. So negative 2 for y, 2 for m, 3 for x, and then solve for b. Subtract the 6 from both sides. And we should have the equation of that unknown line being y equals 2x minus 8. So this is the original line. We're concerned with the perpendicular line to that. The slope of the perpendicular line is going to be 2 over 1 flipped, and then you take the opposite sign. Now step 2, pick an x, pick a y, then use that. Look, they made it really tricky. They want you to use the x-intercept of this line to make that happen. The x-intercept is found by setting y equal to 0. This is kind of a tricky one, and I wouldn't expect to see this on a test. I just kind of wanted to stretch us a little bit. The x-intercept is going to be when y equals 0. It's where it crosses the, crosses the x-axis. So the idea is uh, you, can, you can solve for that x-intercept by getting x by itself, and you get x equals 4. So x equals 4 when y equals 0 and n is equal to negative a half. And then you can plug those into y equals mx plus b. So 0 equals negative 1 half times 4 plus b. Hey, half of 4 is 2, so it's negative 2 plus b. Add the 2 to the other side, and you get 2 equals b. Therefore, y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. 
That's what we got here. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for your patience through some kind of tricky problems, and uh, hope it was helpful.